Another important aspect with the storm scene is that it represents a gear change in the story. So this is really the first time the characters are leaving the relative safety of the start of the game. And we definitely wanted to find a way to represent that in the art. So what we have here is we have a shift from the lighting style at the start of the game, which is very much a found lighting style. It's all lit by the sunlight and bounce light. There's no artificial light sources at all. And for the first time then in the storm scene, we changed to a much more filmic set lit feel. And that is to get that little feeling of unease there. There's a color change also. So we go from a natural grade to more of a blue green tint. And that also brings that feeling of unease that everything might not be quite right. And it's the first time in the game that we really see that. So it kicks off then what is to follow in the rest of the game in terms of the horror aspects when they do get on board the ship. As well as that, there's a really important change of camera in terms of when the storm starts. So we go from a more composed, steady camera to a really handheld feel. And the idea there is that we want to emphasize the effects of the storm and have a lot more kinetic feel to the camera work. Also, the feeling there is that you want the audience present in the scene. So having a handheld, it gives this feeling that there's almost an unseen participant following around the characters filming this stuff. So for example, we try things like every time there's movement or a character is dragged or pushed off, the camera goes with them and follows them just to get the impression that you're right there with them and you're taking part in the storm as well. So that was quite an important beat. Once the characters journey into the ghost ship, the water's still ever present and we use audio to remind the players of this with the waves pounding against the hull of the boat, like the heartbeat of an enormous beast with these metal creaks and groans, this leviathan ready to swallow them up at any moment. The underwater content is a very different challenge. There's a different timing mindset you have to consider. It's all about observing and absorbing yourself into that area. We looked at various different reference, film, TV and game reference too. Luckily, two of us on the team scuba dived before, which was good. We even went to a local pool and did some film reference for some of the more complicated scenes in the game, the fight scenes. We found in a lot of the reference, the divers would do a small paddle movement with their hands to readjust and center themselves. And also we found a lot of the divers use the environment to pull themselves along and push off from. So we try to incorporate those details into our work. There's something really fun about shooting on stormy conditions and there's something fun about conveying that. But interestingly, one of the things in conveying that in terms of CG is that you have to do a lot of things you'd maybe get for free if you were actually shooting it. So if you're really out there in a storm holding your camera, you would be getting blown around and you'd be getting rain on the lens or whatever you might get. When you work in CG, everything's automatically clean. So sometimes it's about how you can dirty up the shots and bring back some of those natural elements to convince the viewer that actually that storm is real. So for example, in the storm you see, you have a lot of mist, a lot of rain moving around, showing how windy it is, showing how stormy it is, blown into the camera. So that really adds a lot of life. In the underwater scene, we used it for silt, for plankton, for any kind of dirt and noise in the ocean. And without that, it can really seem quite lifeless. So that was a hugely important element. 